Hello and welcome to today's video, which is going to be the all about my blush tag. I was very excited when I saw this tag because basically it is about blush, but it is the same questions as the all about my eyeshadow palettes tag, which I did do that tag. I will leave that in the description box if you do want to see it. I really enjoy these type of tag videos. They are a whole lot of fun and I really do love blush. Eyeshadow, definitely my number one favorite category of makeup but blush and highlighter are probably the next ones after that. I really do enjoy blush, and I tend to have a lot of the same colors over and over again, but I think for my face, it's kind of an essential part of makeup. I just love the way blush looks. I've seen so many people doing this. I saw Sarah Rose do it, Kelly Gooch, and so many other people. I will leave the quest questions in the description box, and let's get started. Question one is most used or everyday blush, and for that I picked this one by Too Faced, which is the Love Plush Blush in Baby Love, and I really do love this. I have a pan on it, and I've obviously used it a lot, and this is the one I'm wearing today. This is just a very pinky neutral, but it's not too pink on the face. It does pull a bit of warmth. I do have warm undertones though, so a lot of blushes tend to pull a bit warmer on me, but yes, I think this is a really good formula. I also love the packaging. I've worn this so much. I don't know why that they got rid of these. For a while, they were still on the Too Faced website. I haven't checked that, but they have not been sold, you know, at an Ulta or Sephora for a very, very long time, which is unfortunate because Actually, I think this is a very, very good blush formula. The next question is the most expensive, and that is this Marc Jacobs. This is called the Air Blush Blush in Flesh and Fantasy, and full size, these are $42. I did get this 20% off at Sephora several years ago. I will say though, Marc Jacobs Makeup has had so many sales on their website. These were on sale for $26 about a month ago, and I do think this is a very nice formula. It is one of the easiest to blend in my collection. $42 though for blush, in my opinion, is quite a bit, so I wouldn't say that it's worth that, but I mean, maybe I would get other colors if they're on sale for, you know, 20 something dollars or maybe $30, but yeah, 42 is quite a bit. However, it is very, very nice. The next question is most affordable and I had to go with the Essence Satin Touch Blush. This is in the color Satin Love and these are only about $3, which is crazy. This is a very neutral type color, which I do enjoy quite a bit. Obviously the packaging is broken, which I've noticed has happened to a lot of people who own these blushes. However, the quality of the blush itself is fantastic, even though obviously they got cheaper packaging, which probably helps make it less expensive. I think this is very nice. I love the formula. $3, you know, pretty good, can't complain. I really do like this one quite a bit. The next question is worth the hype. And I will say these blushes don't get a lot of hype anymore, but they did used to, and that is MAC blushes. This is the color Melba. I just have this in a magnetic pan and I have it in this magnetic palette. This is a very peachy neutral shade. I love this color. And I personally do think that the MAC blush formula is fantastic. It is very smooth, easy to blend, lasts all day on the face. Um, but nowadays there are so many good blushes that are at the drugstore, more affordable. Um, I do feel like when I first was getting into makeup well over 10 years ago, I did have a hard time finding good blush formulas because a lot of the ones that I bought at the drugstore at the time would fade off my face within 20 minutes. Um, and that's when I discovered MAC blushes and I found that they lasted all day and they looked so amazing and they had so many different colors. However, now the market is much more saturated. Um, so I get why MAC doesn't get as much hype as it does, but at the time, you know, MAC blushes really were the best that I could find for many years. But nowadays, obviously the drugstore has really, really improved their formulas and colors and all of that. Um, but personally, I still do like the MAC blushes and I think they are very good. Then we have a favorite blush from your favorite brand. And I went with Milani. Milani really is one of my favorite brands. I like a lot of their products. I love their eye primer, their foundation, some of their eyeshadow palettes. I mean, I think Milani is a great brand. 
and I really do, this is the one in Tea Rose. This is one of their flower shape blushes, but they do also have the baked blushes and I have one of those and I think that one is great too. They're a different formula though. The baked ones have a bit of shimmer, whereas this is a very matte, but it doesn't look flat on the face. It's just a really pretty, this is more of like a light pinky mauve. I really enjoy this blush as well. And oh, if you're interested, I actually did rank my entire blush collection as well. So I will leave that in the description box. But yeah, these Milani blushes are really good. And this is only about seven or eight dollars, depending where you buy it. The next question is your newest blush. And I went with the cover effects. I did recently get a blush, but that was in PR. So I did decide to pick the last one that I purchased myself. And I did get one of these cover effects duos. These are very, very hyped up. And I got it in Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, 50% off. I got the color Pink Dahlia and wow, I am loving this. This is, again, a, this is more of like a peachy pink. I have a lot of similar shades, I know. But I also like this side. I've worn this as a highlighter by itself and it's beautiful, but I've also mixed these together to get a bit of a shimmery blush and wow very smooth formula, very easy to blend, very pigmented though. So this is one where I need to use a very, very light hand, but I am glad that I finally tried these. People have been talking about them for so long and yes, I did get this, but I'm glad that I got it in the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty for 50% off. The next question is your oldest blush. And for me, this was very easy to find because this is very, very old. This is from MAC. This is from the Liberty of London collection. This is the color Prim and Proper. This is kind of a mauve type color. I still like this blush. I still use it. This blush is over 10 years old. The Liberty of London collection was it was over 10 years ago. It was either in 2009, maybe it was 2010, but I don't think so. Either way, this is really old. Definitely the oldest makeup product I still have in my collection, but it still works. It's not irritating my skin. It still blends well. It's still great quality, so I'm going to use it. Um, I do really like this packaging as well. It's very, very adorable. And this was in the day where I was super into MAC and all of their limited edition collections. And this one was really fun. And I also love the packaging design. Then we have the most underrated. And I did decide to pick two for this because I could not really decide it. I picked one high end and one drugstore. Um, I think this Wander Beauty blush is so underrated. This is from the Trip for Two Duo. This is the color Bellini. I got this in BoxyCharm and this pinky peach coral is so beautiful, but the formula is so smooth. One of the easiest to blend blushes. Looks so natural on the face. Has a bit of a sheen, but no shimmer. I don't know how they do that. This is just so good. I love this blush. I don't hear many people talking about this, but like I said, it was in BoxyCharm and it is amazing. And then for the drugstore one, I wanted to pick this one by e.l.f. because these are so good and they're only $6. This is the color Always Cheeky. I think these are their mineral infused blushes. They also have bronzers in this line. I don't hear that many people talking about these, but these are so good, smooth, pigmented, but not too pigmented, not blotchy at all, does last all day. You know, like I said, the drugstore has really improved their blush formulas, especially compared to 10 years ago, where most of them, in my opinion, the ones I tried were not that good, but this is just as good as a high-end blush. This is a standard peach color. I really do enjoy this one, and yeah. I do think these deserve a lot more hype and also the packaging is very nice. Alrighty, the last question is most overrated or disappointing. And in general, I do think Tarte blushes are overrated. They used to be some of the most popular on YouTube. People talked about them all the time. This is Tarte Exposed, which people used to talk about this blush all the time. There weren't that many colors, I will say, in this very neutral mauve, I mean, Again, the market is just, it has so much more blush than there used to be. Um, and so when this came out, people were just raving about it. This one in particular, I don't know if you can see, has so much hard pan on it. I have to work very hard to even pick this up with my blush brush. And I do have some other Tarte blushes from limited edition collections that I will say the formula is better than Tarte Exposed. They don't get as hard panned, but 
for being as expensive as they are and with the market what it is, I just don't think Tarte blushes in general are really worth it. I do love this color and I do use it sometimes, but it just takes a lot of building and a lot of work to even to get it to show up, which is kind of frustrating, so yeah. Overall, Tarte blush is definitely overrated, according to me. That is it for this blush tag video. I really enjoy blush. I think it is a whole lot of fun, and I do feel like my face looks kind of empty without blush. So for me, it is a crucial step. If you are interested, I will leave the questions down below if you want to do this tag as well, or answer it in the comments below. That is it. Thank you so much for watching.